this lecture, we'll overview the electron beam lithography technique. In the previous lecture, we went through the photolithography technique and its limits. Photolithography resolution is mostly limited by the diffraction of the uh, UV light or UV radiation. In the contact mode or soft contact mode, it is limited by the near field diffraction and in the projection mode, it is limited by the far field diffraction. In this case, what we are doing is we are using high energy electron beam to write nanoscale patterns. So here we are not limited by the wavelength of the electrons. We are mostly limited by the resist properties and also the quality of the electron beam optics. Okay. Here, this is a schematic of electron beam machine, which is a, also a microscope. It is an electron beam microscope. We have a source of electron. We extract the electrons from the source using electric field, using some electrodes. Okay, and there are focusing mechanisms which actually can focus the electron beam onto a substrate. And there are also coils, which are scan coils, which you can use to raster the beam onto the substrate and also write whatever the feature you want using the beam. And apart from that, there are also the uh, components or mechanism where you can take the image of the substrate, either using the backscattered electron or the secondary electrons. The advantage of using electron beam machine is mainly the resolution. The electron beam microscope and this electron beam machine can image and also write with very high resolution of the order of a few nanometers. The modern day machines can go down to few nanometers in imaging resolution. But the writing resolution, as I mentioned, is mostly limited by the properties of the resist that we use, okay. the polymer substrate or the resist that we got on top of the substrate. Okay. Here this is a picture of a modern day electron beam writer which you would find usually in a lab or institute atmosphere. Now let us quickly look at what are the effects of the electron with the interaction of interaction effects of electrons with the substrate. Okay. So, here is a primary electron beam, with a high energy electron beam of the order of few tens of uh, kilo electron volt. So, you can have these beams with energies like um, maybe 15 to maybe 100 kilo electron volt. That is typically the energy used for writing these patterns. So, let's say 15 kilo electron volt to to something 100 kilo electron volt that is what these electron beam machines come with okay so when such a high energy electron beam falls on the substrate you are going to have a few different effects you can have these electrons backscattered you can have secondary electrons produced from the primary beam and there are other effects such as cathode luminescence, OJ electrons, X-rays, which are not really relevant for our discussion on lithography here. Okay. So lithography mostly happens with the secondary electrons. Okay. And here this detector also takes the image using the secondary electrons. The secondary electrons are low in energy and it's emitted from the surface mostly. So that will have the characteristics of substrate is mostly suitable for observing the surface topography and the number of secondary electrons and its characteristics depends on the incident angle and also the electron, the primary beam electrons and the surface interaction and nature of the surface also. And apart from all this there is also a transmitted electron beam which you can get when all the, the substrates really really thin, which will allow the electrons to go through 
that is what is used in transmission electron microscopes but this is a scanning electron microscope where you are getting the image using the secondary electrons or the backscattered electrons and you are write you are using this machine to write the pattern using the secondary electrons so let's look at what limits the resolution so we just now discussed that the the spot size or the feature size that you can get with the the imaging feature or the spot size that you can get is approximately like few nanometer okay spot size is like maybe 2 to 5 nanometer that's what you can get okay now let's look at what limits the resolution okay. so in mostly in lab atmosphere you can get patterns down to 20 nanometer without a lot of effort but pushing below 20 nanometer requires a lot of you know extra care okay so most of this resolution issue come from the lateral diffusion of the secondary electrons lateral diffusion of the secondary electron and also the forward scattering characteristics the forward scattering deflect the primary beam the primary beam is here okay this is the primary beam the forward scattering deflects this primary beam okay and also generate the secondary electrons here which are shown by these thin small arrows and uh, these are much lower in energy and these are responsible for exposing the resist or res uh, responsible for the chemical change that happens in the resist and these secondary electrons are the one which does the job for us in the lithography process so they are generated and mostly travels in the, the in a direction which is perpendicular to the primary beam so they travel somewhat laterally okay and they also diffuse laterally so rather than just causing the chemical change at the spot size this diffusion of this secondary electrons will have an effect of widening the feature size so if the beam size is say 2 nanometer but the secondary electron propagates laterally to few more nanometers okay so the effective area of the resist which is getting affected will be like maybe another few more nanometers okay if you define two, two nanometers as spot size eventually you probably will be getting like six to seven nanometer as the feature size you have to add few number nanometers to that so it's not just the area where the primary beam has been you know bombarded also a circumference or an area around it will get exposed that is by the secondary electron and of course this diffusion characteristics of the secondary electron will if we further diffuses that also can broaden the feature okay so there are a lot of these parameters which will play into when while deciding the feature size when you do lithography Though the spot size is 2 nanometer, but lithography mostly is decided by the characteristic of the resist because the diffusion characteristics of secondary electron is completely decided by the resist. Okay. And of course, there are also factors which play because how many, uh, how much, how many secondary electrons are produced and how much backscattered electrons are produced, all this will have an effect. Those depends upon the interface between the resist and the substrate. Okay. And the third limiting factor is the resist swelling by the developer so when you post process it or when you develop this you will dip this substrate into some solvent that actually can cause little more chemical change further chemical change and the kind of swelling effect that will broaden the or soften the feature that you have better okay so eventually what is responsible for the feature size is mostly the characteristics of the resist and the scattering mechanism it's not the primary beam that is the take home message 
okay there is a interesting contrast between the photolithography and the electron beam lithography the photolithography uses photons which are not charged particle whereas electron beam lithography uses electrons which are negatively charged so photolithography doesn't really care about the polarity or the nature of substrate but for conducting electron beam lithography you have to keep a substrate electrically neutral else you will have charge accumulation which is going to interact with the oncoming electrons okay and there will be a repulsive interaction and you will not get a good pattern and it's almost impossible to write anything useful if the substrate gets charged and you cannot you cannot also get an image either so the charging effect is a huge issue so you cannot directly write on to any substrate which is highly insulating or even semi insulating okay because the charging effect is going to affect your resolution and also the pattern feature so you need to have some kind of mechanism to remove this charge as soon as it falls on the substrate okay so but generally this uh, most of the resistors are actually insulating they are polymers okay but here the thickness of the resist is really small it's almost like a few hundreds of nanometer so the electron beam the primary electron beam which falls on will directly interact with the uh, with the substrate which is assumed to be conducting okay so the charging effect is not a huge issue when you use thinner uh, resist thinner polymer okay okay now but insulating substrates such as glass or quartz okay or even highly resistive silicon okay or gallium arsenide okay these wafers or these materials can cause charge build up and the beam will get deflected and also will result, result in pattern distortion so what generally is done in such situation is you can have some kind of a conducting layer on top or beneath other resist so you can put a really thin layer of um, say metal such as aluminum titanium or chromium or sometimes gold on top of the resist okay you bake the resist you coat the resist bake the resist and um, there is a process which um, i mean which are very simple but you basically you coat the resist then you bake it at certain temperature which is prescribed by the resist manufacturer then after that then the resist is prepared for the exposure okay and after that you can coat a very thin layer of um, gold like few nanometers of gold or chromium titanium or any any other metal which you can easily remove okay this thin metal will not pose any 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 hindrance to the electron beam so it will pass through it will be transparent it will pass through but the charge neutrality will be taken care for the charge grounding thing will be taken care by this a metallic nature of the substrate okay so usually uh, lighter metals are preferred because the heavier elements can actually cause interfere with the beam and cause more back scattering okay so the forward scattering will be will not be much affected if you have lighter metal so that is the reason aluminum or titanium or chromium is preferred okay and this except gold this this titanium aluminum or chromium can easily be removed using a diluted hydrofluoric acid after the processing without affecting the resist so you have to remove it before you develop it so you can dip it in uh, hydrofluoric acid you can get this um, layer of chromium or aluminum or these things removed then you can do your normal development that is the process okay here we have few representative images of electron beam lithograph uh, structures here this is an emblem of the institute i said trivandrapuram you can see the overall scale is 30 micrometer so if you walk down through this line the tip of this will be like like a few maybe like 100 nanometer or in that range okay 
and this we already have seen this is also done by electron beam lithography and the feature size the smallest feature size is like six to seven uh, nanometer the picture here shows a image which is done with a combination of electron beam and photolithography okay the larger structures that you are seeing here those are done by photolithography and the small structure in the middle this you no know, yellow or golden shape golden colored region a magnified view of this structure is given here in this uh, picture in this image so this is center here okay so what you do here is you write the larger structure with the photolithography and the smaller structure with the electron beam lithography so there are two there are two lithography stages you finish the first lithography do the metallization then take the sample and repeat the process but using electron beam lithography okay so here what you are seeing is the smallest feature here is like 100 less than 100 nanometer of size these gates these are surface gates this is like less than 100 nanometer close to 60 70 nanometer that's what we have in this picture okay and the overall size scale is here okay. scale bar is here this one micrometer okay and um, what you're seeing in this picture is nano machines nano scale gears which are run by electron beam lithography plus further processing such as metallization and and um, you know etching okay this is done at sandia labs okay. and uh, so this slide telling you how powerful the electron beam lithography is but the, the downside is the substrate choice are limited and the throughput is really really low because this is a serial processing so you have to write structure by structure you cannot expose parallelly the features down the all the wafer in the complete wafer at once okay because you have to write it's a writing process whereas other one is a exposing process you have a mask and you expose all the region at once here you write the feature one by one so this is not really compatible with the you know, ultra high throughput you know process right you don't have as much yield as a photolithography process as the photolithography process okay so now we have um, uh, reviewed the photolithography process in the previous class and the electron beam lithography process in this lecture okay the generally the, the, the other two process other two techniques or uh, processes which accompanies the lithography is metallization and the second one is etching okay so let's look at this process also very briefly for completeness when you finish the lithography either with um, electron beam or with light you will generally end up with three profiles after developing okay you have something called an undercut where you have a wider region close to surface and a narrow region or a neck kind of region at the top surface where this dark region is the resist photo photo resist or electron beam resist and this is the substrate okay this is a substrate this is this profile is called undercut Okay, this is also called lift off profile. You will come to know very very soon why this is called lift off profile. Okay, and this is called overcut. This is just like you have wider region on the top and a narrow region on the bottom, and it's a vertical profile, but the width is more or less same after after you develop it. So now imagine that in each of this case you are going to do a metallization. Okay, so after lithography, what you would do is you will deposit some metal which will act as a gate electrode or ohmic contact okay now when you deposit metal 
let's consider it in the the second case where you have overcut profile okay in the overcut profile what happens okay when you have in this profile when you are in this profile the metal will get deposited throughout all this region when you do metallization okay it will be continuous very so metal comes from metal ion metal atoms come from here from a metal from a source which is called thermal evaporator or electron beam evaporator or could be from a sputtering source okay it will get deposited everywhere now next step is lifting off lifting off means it is the stripping the resist where you will lift off the you will dissolve the resist which is on either side here okay and you will you eventually you want end up with only the metal piece where it is exposed okay that's what you want but in this case since it's a continuous film the lift off will not be clean because lift off needs something like an undercut profile where you have a wider bottom region something like this so that when you deposit metal you get breaks or a discontinuous film so that it's easy to peel off this region and this region okay so that you will eventually end up with only this piece of metal on the surface so since you have metal coated on the side walls in a overcut profile it is a complete it's a continuous film of metal when you look from the top so when you try to lift off the metal which are on the resist side which is not developed but all metal either all metal will get lifted off or some of the metal piece will stay there so that you will not get a you will end up getting a no not end up getting an, a distorted or continuous pattern wherever you want break you won't get it because you will have pieces of metal left and piece of metal broken where you want it and all these effects undesired effects will be there so what you need for a clean lift off is something called a undercut or lift off profile which is something like this okay but we want more cave like feature towards the bottom you want an undercut so that when you deposit metal you get breaks so that the metal film is not really continuous okay so generally this undercut profile is obtained by something called a bilayer resist the vertical profile is also fine but if there is a small angle when you deposit metal then you can get coated metal on the side walls also which is not desirable so vertical profile is also fine as long as the metal deposition is perfectly normally substrate so that you have break in the film at the edges of the resist the side walls of the resist but usually this undercut profile are obtained by using something called a bilayer resist scheme where you have a weaker bottom layer that will undergo more chemical change and it will give you a cave like feature okay something like this okay so that naturally the metal which is deposited which is here will get broken at the side so there are breaks here or there are breaks here so that the lift off will be clean so when you develop when you lift off it so when you strip the resist all this portion will get disappeared okay and you will eventually end up with only this piece here as shown here you will have this one but if you have perfectly vertical side walls you can get a thin film of metal coated on the side that is going to give you something like a fan shape at the edge that is also not really desirable for these devices because these are like really pointy structures which actually also going to affect the electrostatics near the region because these gates or these structures will be used to apply electric fields or run currents into it so this can actually affect your performance of the device so what is really desirable is this structure which generally is obtained by using an undercut profile okay get having an undercut profile or lift off profile 
So most of this lithography, especially high resolution lithography, plain lithography needs bilayer resist scheme. So you have a bottom layer which is slightly weaker and the top layer is going to define your, uh, define the resolution, okay. But bottom layer will help you to lift off it correctly, okay. Now let us very quickly overview the metallization process. Metallization is a very simple process to understand. What you have is you have a source which is going to look like something shown, like shown, something shown here. It's, a, it's like a boat or a basket which you can, where you can keep the metal that you want to put on the substrate. Then you heat it using a current, high current running through this basket. Then it's going to glow like this as shown here, then this metal will evaporate and get deposited on the substrate. So assuming that most of these metal atoms travel perfectly normal to the substrate. And this is a picture of a simple machine which is called thermal evaporation. This thermal evaporator and this process is called thermal evaporation. This is how you keep the material inside and this is how it's going to look like when you do the evaporation. And, um, there is a limit how, what kind of metals you can do thermally, you can, we can perform thermally operation because this depends upon the melting point of the metal. So if you have metals with a very high melting point such as molybdenum or you know titanium or other like uh, palladium, you will resort to a similar technique which is called electron beam evaporation. There, you don't use the direct current or I squared R heating to evaporate the metal, just like as shown here. What you do is you will use electron beam, energy from the electron beam, a small electron beam is going to bombard the basket where you are going to keep the material and that will get evaporated from there with that energy. Okay. So that is the technique which we use when you have refractory metal. So metals with high melting points. And another technique which generally used for metallization is sputtering. There are various uh, different versions of this uh, sputtering, it's called plasma sputtering, where you have a glow discharge plasma inside and uh, you have a material which you want to get, which you want to coat and the substrate where you want to coat it. So this plasma is biased so that the metal, once it is uh, once it's sputtered out, will eventually get deposited on the substrate. So this is an isotropic process. What I'm trying to say is the metal which will get released from this um, target and got deposited on the substrate, deposit in all the angles. It's a plasma. Okay. So it also will coat the side walls of the resist. So using plasma sputtering, it's very hard to get a very good lift of uh, profile because um, the metal film also will get caught on the side walls as we discussed here. So lifting off is not uh, not really easy when you have uh, when you have when you deposit metal using uh, sputter. Okay. Now a very quick look at the other process that is etching. Etching is the removal of material, but metallization is the addition of material. So once you finish the lithography, you will have a profile where you don't have the resist in the middle, somewhere, somewhere in the middle. And you can load this substrate into some into a machine called the plasma etching or dry etching system. There are various versions of this uh, at dry etcher. There are DC, RIE, R plus, all kinds of machines are there, but we are not going to go in details here. So what you have here is energetic ions in the plasma, which is going to get bomb, which is going to bombard on the sub, on the exposed region and sputter the material out, and you are going to get a pit. There are again variations of this H, H profiles. You can have perfectly vertical completely an isotropic profile and you can have a profile which looks like a boat shaped here 
and you can also have isotopic profile. Generally, the plasma etching gives anisotropic etch profiles where high aspect ratio is required. But you can also do this etching chemically using wet chemical etching, where the chemical reaction will remove the material. It will convert some, it will break some bond, make some bond, and you can also dissolve it in certain solvents. Okay. So when you do chemical reaction to do etching, this is also called wet chemical etching, then that is not really directional. Okay. So you will get more or less a uniform edge profile. It will etch in all the directions uniformly. So you will not get this high aspect ratio profiles using wet chemical etching. Fewer, fewer work required structure with the really high aspect ratio, you always have to go with the dry etching. And there are dry, etch, dry etching techniques and there are also variations in the dry etching technique which will give you more and more or better and better aspect ratios. Okay. So that is the story about um, etching. Now we have um, reviewed the lithography techniques, the metallization technique and also the etching technique. Okay. Now let's go through a complete device fabrication process process flow. Okay. A step by step process, process step by step starting from the bare wafer down to the final device. Okay. So this is what generally used for most of the gated devices that we discuss in the rest of the in the rest of the lectures. Okay. So you have a substrate. Assume that it's a silicon substrate for time being, a silicon silicon germanium two-dimensional electron system. You assume that. Okay. And the typical dimensions are shown here. And one of the first steps that you would do is you will remove the material or remove the two deck wherever you don't want it. So you will etch down regions where you don't want the two deck by photolithography. So once you etch it down, you will get a profile which looks something like this. Okay. So wherever a darker region, dark, dark region, wherever you have the darker, darker color, you don't have any two dimensional tone gas there. You have etched down the wafer a little bit. Okay. Now, by this process, you have defined the path for electrons. Okay, you can come and center region here is the active region. And next process would be you need to define ohmic contact to this region because you have to run currents and, vol and measure voltages. So you have to inject electrons. So for that, you need ohmic contact. These contacts inject the electrons into the channel, which is the two dimensional electron gas in the middle surface. Then you have a stack, right? You have surface. You hash down wherever you don't want it. But then you also need to inject electrons into the two-dimensional electron system. There, you what you do is you diffuse some dopants in this region, either by ion implantation, or you can also use some technique called alloying technique, where you make those regions degeneratively doped, okay, from top to bottom, top to the valve. So. This region will act like the contacts or ohmic contacts or metals which contacts the two dimensional electron system in the middle. Then the next step would be we need to define the larger gauge structures which are defined by photolithography. Okay. And again, these features are pretty large, like a few micrometers are the smallest feature here. These are done by photolithography. And eventually, you need to define really small structure, which is in the nanometer, few tens of nanometer scale in the middle. That is done by electron bibliography. So after this step, you actually draw this small feature which you are showing, shown here, the enlarged LSCM picture, the scanning electron microscope picture is given here. This is basically whatever you are seeing here. That is this picture. Okay. So that is done by electron lithography. So you finish all the large scale structure by photolithography and associated process such as metallization or etching. So you have etching, this is an etching stage, and rest of them are actually metallization stage. Then there are annealing stages in the middle. Okay. 
then you transfer the wafer from the process flow of photolithography to the electron beam lithography. Okay, here using electron beam lithography, you finish and define the really fine gates. Well, these gates are like few tens of nanometer, like 30 to 40 nanometer. 300 nanometer scale is here. Okay. So this is this slide shows a typical step by step process that one need to follow to get a gated device. This device eventually would work as a electrostatically confined quantum dot structure. So you when you analyze all these gates, you will get a small puddle of electron in the middle, confined electrons in the middle. And you also will get some thin channel here. These are quantum point contacts, which you will learn in the one of the coming modules. Okay. All right. So in nutshell, during this lecture and the last lecture, we reviewed the sample fabrication technique, especially with a focus on what generally is done in, in a university or institute atmosphere in the first lab. Okay. And this is no way related to what is being done in the industry. That is a much, much larger scale process, which are not really affordable by normal university or institutes. All right.